What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Wednesday, July 17th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, the energy transition won't happen. Very opinion piece from friends over at cityjournal.org. But as Stu said, really? Next up, China plans for low carbon upgrades for coal power sector. Interesting. Now that's a tongue full there. Next up, electricity rationing at charger stations due to limited charging infrastructure in Europe. You've got to love it. Next up, nine consequential energy predictions, a mid-year 2024 review. This is another great opinion piece from Forbes. And then finally, some breaking news. ExxonMobil unveils 30-well drilling campaign for 7th oil and gas project in offshore Guyana. Just an absolutely unbelievable find they've gotten going there. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today, and then we'll cover the API crude oil inventory guesstimate of what you will hear later today, which is the EIA, the EIA's crude oil inventory report. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies over there. The energy transition won't happen. Mark Mills actually wrote this one, and it is pretty darn cool. We love Mark Mills. The foundation innovation in cloud technology and artificial intelligence will require more energy than ever before, shattering any illusion that we will restrict supply. He pulls no punches. No, he does not. I love Mark Mills. Data centers, the information power plants at the center of the cloud revolution are flagged as the primary culprit for this exploding power demand. I'll tell you, Mark really goes through this and he lays it out. To see what the future holds, we must take a deep dive into the arcana of today's cloud, the loosely turned term denoting constellation of data centers, hardware and communication systems. In other words, a very large black hole of energy. <laughs> this is a great point he, he he brings here. As one researcher notes, adding AI to Google search boosts the energy use per search tenfold. That's right. So instead of going down the, the, the street and yelling at your neighbor, which takes no energy, you, hey, Martha! What do you think? Absolutely. We're going to save the planet by talking to your neighbors. Absolutely. And it, Absolutely. It, Talk to Martha. Save the planet. <laughs> Great article by Mark Mills. What's next? Let's go to China. Let's flop around the corner here to China. China plans low carbon upgrades for coal power sector. They've put out trying to get their coal, their carbon emissions under control. Biomass plants in China are not financially viable without subsidies. They're going to subsidize everything else. Why? Because they can manufacture them and sell them to the West, to the suckers in the West. Here's where it gets funny. They're now saying that their low carbon emission projects for coal are going to have natural gas plant standards. Wow. How are they going to do that? You called this years ago when you said, watch out, natural gas will become green energy. I mean, it's pretty crazy. So what are they planning on doing? China actually plans to cut carbon emissions in its coal power industry by piloting the firing of power plants using coal mixed with either green ammonia or biomass, as well as using some CCUS stuff. I mean, I watched the I was watching last night, Batman Begins, and oh, you yeah. remember in there, they're dumping all that stuff into the world. That's what I think, green ammonia? Oh, great. That's what's going to get sprayed on me before the scarecrow scares me. You know, you and I have been doing this for four years. And and one of the things that just cracks me up is the more we use, the further we go to renewables, the more fossil fuels we use. That you said it. It is happening. And this is another one. The more we go to ammonia, the greener the water gets. It's yeah, going to get nasty. It's, it's unbelievable. All right, let's go to the next one here. You can't buy this kind of entertainment on the news desk today. Electricity wreck at charging stations due to limiting charging infrastructure in Europe. Michael, physics and fiscal responsibility matter to the grid. 
and I am not kidding on this story. The fee went into effect July 1st. Germany's online reports how Dutch charging stations operator Allegro is imposing a blocking fee on all of its fast chargers because they're taking too much. I mean, I mean, what did you expect? Yeah, according to Allegro, this is a quote, the introduction of this fee is necessary to ensure fair and timely access to charging stations, says, says reports Blackout News. Allegro explains the charge is necessary to intend, intended to prevent e-car drivers from occupying the charging stations for longer than necessary. What a waste of time. Yeah. And so great. You're going to roll out all of it. I mean, it's the chicken and the egg concept. We had an explosion of EVs, which out without thinking about, well, where's the infrastructure to come from? I saw this great video today on Twitter. I wish I could pull it up. I'm pretty sure it was Ross Hendricks. It was a video of a guy saying, you know, he had a he had a generator on the back of his Tesla and it was plugged into the side. And it's like, hey, you want to know how you the, the way yep. to improve your Tesla mileage? With fossil fuels. I saw a, I kid you not, I got, I was driving down the road and I saw a cyber truck with the plug out and he had a generator sitting in the back and they were driving down the road. I kid you not. I, I, I was wanting to get, I was a first seeing a cyber truck out in the middle where I live is like, you know, that's a rogue elephant, you know, They're waiting to cool. happen. They're, They're kind of cool. cool. And I was wanting to see it, but when I saw I was driving down the road with the plug hanging out, I thought it was like, they drove away with the, no, you get closer, you can hear the generator running in the truck. It's, hey, it's self-sustaining. Right. I sustainable. Sustainable. All right. Uh, what's next? Nine consequential energy predictions. Mid-year review from Forbes contributing author David Blackman. Dun, Step dun, dun. on out. Here it is. Let's go through these real quick. Non-Tesla automakers will be pressured by investors to scale back plans, EVs, even further. An easy one. 100% agree. I couldn't agree more. Tesla is going to do well. Ford, shoot themselves in the foot. And the splatter is, they're going to chainy themselves. And the splatter is going to get all the investors. Renewable energy sources will keep growing, but growth will be tilted to more solar than wind. I said this four or five months ago. I think we still will see more solar. Wind is quite honestly an abomination in my opinion. The whales right. are the whales are excited to hear that. What do we what's the next one? National energy security. Oh, you missed one. The world will use record oh. volumes of coal. Interesting. Oh, I think that and it goes back to my saying that you've been I've been talking about for four years. The more we go renewable, the more fossil fuels we will use. It is a we're gonna and you, do you know the what's the Intel's Moore's law? I'm going to come up with a law. We're going to call this the Turley Tanner law. It's, it's, it's actually a good one. What's the next one? <laughs> National energy security considerations will continue to be prioritized over international climate goals. This one is critical. It is really going to happen because people are tired. Yep. I mean, next one, U.S. energy policy and its future direction will become a central issue in the fall elections. Yep. I, I disagree a little bit with this one, assuming he. Well, because I think he probably wrote this prior to the assassination attempt in order that I think the shift has focused now a little bit on who do you want? And I, I think the, the it shifted a little bit. I think it's going to be a issue. Do I think it'll be the central issue? I'm not sure. Next there, one, yeah, global. It, to, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I agree. A central, not the central. Yes. Next one. Global demand for crude oil will increase between two to 2.5 million barrels of oil per day per 2024. You know, he, he points out that the the IEA only has 700,000 barrels per day year over year. So he's really going out on a limb three X in what he thinks it's going to be. Uh, the price of crude oil will not rise above $90 per barrel at any point during 2024. Absolutely agree with that. I think we've got a better chance of seeing $59 oil than we do $91 oil. Yeah. What do you think about his next one here? The U.S. domestic rig count will gra I mean, continue to gradually drop. I think he's spot on. I think, unfortunately, especially with the not the with with everybody basically assuming 
former President Trump's going to win. Even even Kramer was, I mean, Kramer was talking about it this morning on CNBC. So maybe we're wrong. Maybe the inverse Kramer is coming in. But I completely oh, no. agree. If now's the time to buy energy stocks, if you want, because by the time November rolls around, you're going to see, you know, drill, baby, drill. The last one, there will be no big spikes in gasoline prices during 2024. He's probably right in this one. Maybe just, you know, he points out no big spikes, just normal ebbs and flows to be expected during a year in which global crude markets have remained unusually stable. Here's where I'm going to say, I'm going to put a caveat and put a dart on this one. Okay. If we have anything in the beginning of 2025, because they are eliminating the national gasoline reserves, strategic gasoline reserves out of the East in order to keep gasoline prices down. Once those are gone, yes, we'll see some volatility. Yeah, absolutely. All right. What's next here? We got to move on. Let's go to breaking news. ExxonMobil unveils 30 well drilling campaign for seventh oil and gas project project off offshore Guyana. This is a big man. Exxon and Hess and China's Sinoc expected hammerhead to produce between 120,000 and 180,000 barrels per day, which is less than the 250,000 from its largest offshore vessels, offshore game. That's still a lot of oil, dude. Oh, it's a huge amount of oil. Hammerhead was discovered in August of, of 2018. Remember, <laughs> we've still got Hess as part of this. We'll, we'll find out in early 2025 probably exactly what's going to happen. So pretty interesting when it comes to all of this. I, I mean, there's just a lot of oil in Guyana. You know why Chevron's after it. I mean, this is probably the easiest, you know, investment, final investment decision, you know, Exxon could have made. I, you know, this was probably a formality, especially when you have some stuff. You know, it is going to be less than the 250,000 barrels that, that they're producing over in the, the Liza unit. But, you know, they're going to have a VLCCC that's capable of storing 1.4 to 2 million barrels. So they're going to be able to uh, get this going. But no, great for uh, great for Exxon. And this is, you know, another win for the Stabroic block. I like it. I like it. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and, and quickly cover oil and gas prices here, guys. But before we do that, we've got to pay the bills. As always, thank you for checking out the world's greatest website, .energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. All the news and quote-unquote analysis you just heard is brought to you by that website. Two and the team do a tremendous job making sure it stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business hit the description below links to the time spans links to the articles sign up for our sub stack the energy newsbeat.substack.com for tomorrow's news today as always we record this on um, the afternoon before you can go ahead and take a look and if you sign up for our sub stack you can see all of the articles that we are going to cover if you want to be again at the tip of the spear www.energynewsbeat.com Dot com overall markets pretty good today s p 500 up about six tenths of a percentage point nasdaq fairly flat two-year yields flat 10-year yields flat um, we did see the dollar index again basically flat bitcoin flat again you know not much movement in the markets outside of crude oil we saw about 1.14 percentage points trim from the opening day currently sitting at 80 76 at about 4 p.m here on the uh, 16th Brent oil, 83.92, only about a quarter of a percentage point hmm. trimmed off that one. Natural gas up a little bit, $1.39 percentage points, but still down relative week over week. We're still sitting at $2.18. Yikes. You know, really where prices are coming into play today. Two things. One, you know, Chinese demand doesn't look great. You know, third straight days of losses. You know, we've got, you know, some interesting data coming out of China. The world's second largest economy only grew 4.7 percentage points in that date ranging April through June, according to official data which is the slowest rate since quarter one of 2023 and missing a Reuters forecast of about 5.1. It also slowed from the pre previous quarter's 5.3 percentage point print. So again, protracted property, Durntown, the property downturn that's going on there. They're entering their own version of 2008. We've got a good quote from Dennis Kistler, Senior Vice President of Trading over there at BOK Financial. Weaker economic data continues to flow from China as continued government support programs have been disappointing with many of Chinese refineries cutting back on weaker fuel demand. We also did see the API's weekly crude oil inventory guesstimate of the EIA's print, which you'll find at about 9.30 today. It actually dropped by 4.4 million barrels, which is 
pretty good, pretty big draw relative. So that's sort of supported prices in the afternoon, even though we've seen things settle out still at $80. So decent draw expected. Again, at 930, you will hear those numbers. So we'll see how they compare. Not much. Everything's kind of all quiet on the Western front, Stu. We got a great recording tomorrow on Devin snapping up Grayson Mill. Everyone's kind of just gearing up for earnings at the beginning of August. It's going to be busy. It's going to be a busy, busy time. And, you know, when the uh, whales are happy, when professors find out why they're dying, right? Yeah, well, we'll get them some other way. Don't worry. I'll, we'll get them another way. Trust me. So <laughs> what else you got, Stu? I'll tell you, just everybody hug your family, hug everybody. And we will keep the energy news rolling your way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right, guys, but with that, we'll let you get out of here, get back to work. We appreciate everybody checking us out here on this gorgeous Wednesday, July 17th. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.